Coach Surtz, you're here in the midst of week three. I, you know, we kind of talked about the other day. I really feel like your newcomers now, their voices are being heard. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes that can be the group that's a little quiet mm -hmm. in the summer. Have you liked what that influx of new guys have been able to bring to your guys who are already loud here? Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's some personnel in the new group. you got some guys that are still feeling their way out. But, like, um, you've got some guys like 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 Cavassia. I think we talked about him, his – you know, his competitive will every single day. That was something that, um, you know, when he was with us at LMU, uh, I was just, his competitive will is as strong as anybody I've ever been around. So, you know, he adds his voice to Henry and Jabo. I think Calix is getting more, you know, Julian, some of the returners, I think they feel more comfortable talking. And now you're seeing, you know, some of the newcomers adapt and grow. And so there's some, some guys still feeling their way out. But I love what I'm seeing from guys in terms of um, being able to adapt, adjust, and, and, and you are, uh, I, I think, from a, you know, in here, when you walk in here, you know, the, the energy and the vibe is good because guys are really getting after it, and they're getting after each other. And I think you and I have talked about that going into our, our, you know, the first practice was every single one of these guys that came back, came back knowing we were bringing in this recruiting class. And every single guy that we recruited came back knowing we were returning 80% of our scoring. So no one out of that group is scared of competition. If they were, they would have said, hey, you know what, I'm out. I'm not competing against this guy. I'm not coming to a place where I have to earn it. And, um, and, and it's been competitive. And competition makes us all better. And so um, it's, it's great to see. And uh, love, love what I'm seeing in terms of guys and their voices and their personalities. And uh, you know, you, you kind of see it with Jason Kent. You see with Voss, guys really acclimating and, and getting comfortable inside of what we're doing. One of the biggest things we talked about a ton, I felt like through the year, was how small the margins are within the valley. Mm -hmm. um, where if people look at me from the outside, I think there's a ton that can be a difference in whether you win a game or lose the mm -hmm. game. But you said time and time again to your group, the margins really are small. Mm -hmm. How do you reinforce that really with your guys this summer and now that you've had a year within yeah. the valley? And, and most of those guys have and some of those that may haven't yet. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we try to harp on every single day, you know, about making deposits, what we talk about all the time, you know, come in, make a deposit. The better the team you play, the higher they're going to call you on that deposit, right? The higher the line is to win. you got to be above that line. you got to have enough deposits to meet the demand, right? And so when you're playing uh, the, the top teams in the Valley, I mean, the, that line is high. And if you haven't deposited enough, you know, we can't get to November 4th and start making deposits or, or December, you know, December 3rd and start making deposits. Like we have to do it now and we got to do it every single day and we got to come in and we got to work with a purpose. And I think that's a big thing. Um, you know, we talked about it all the time. You know, we lost uh, 20 games last year, which, you know, obviously is, is disappointing. Uh, 12 of them were by single digits, three, you know, three possessions or less. Uh, I think seven of them were by five points or less. Um, you know, th those are slim. They're, they're the margin and this league, I think out of 32 leagues, I think we were first or second in the amount of close games as a conference. So there's not usually, in this league, you're not going to um, out-talent people. You're not going to really out-coach them or outwork them. It, it really comes down to your culture, your ability to execute, particularly under pressure, and down the stretch of games where 98% of games are lost in the final three or four minutes, not lose games and, and be able to execute and handle yourself under that pressure. And, you know, the teams that do that, those are the teams that win. And that's, you know, you look at us in Northern Iowa last year, two games. You know, we're up 17 in Northern Iowa, <clears throat> you know, and, that, and with our COVID situation, you know, we have a layup to win it. We miss it. We lose in overtime here. You know, we're up, uh, I think, eight with under eight media. They go box and one. Um, you know, we struggle to score. Uh, we have a chance to take the lead in the final minute, dribble off our foot, and we lose by four. Um, and they won the league. And th I thought, you know, Northern Iowa is a great example. There's others of a team that, man, you know, great culture, great togetherness, great ability down the stretch of a game to execute, you know, and, and make plays, A.J. Green and that group. And that's why they were the regular season champions. How important has it been to add a guy like Mason Miller? I know so many are focusing on Voss and Trent and Cade and, and, and Jason Kent, what he brings, and, and all of them will, and all of them will make a big impact. But I think it's clear when you come into a practice who is probably giving it his most. Um, <laughs> How important is a guy like Mason? Also, like, he's probably not just going to be a practice guy for you this year. I mean, he, he's going to be a big part of what you want to do. Yeah, Mason Mason brings uh, a lot of things I value. He's, um, I, I think the, the thing you hit on when you first walk in is how hard he plays. Uh, he just plays with an incredible motor, as high as any guy I've coached. Um, he's extremely smart. Um, his toughness is through the roof. Um, 
and, and then I think the, the skill maybe, so he understands the game. He's got good feel. He's not just a shooter. He can pass the ball and make plays. He guards, you know, he competes his tail off there. And then I think he's, you know, he's as, as good a shooter as ever coached. I mean, his release, his ability to shoot off movement, um, his ability to get it off. I mean, he made, uh, I think, you know, 98 threes last year um, at about 45, 46% where guys were really, you know, he was a main option. You know, they were really, you know, trying to take him away. Um, on this team, he kind of kind of blends in the background, but he's a guy, you know, his gravity, which, you know, people got to account for him. He's going to stretch defenses, his range. Um, it's going to open things up for those other guys and then their ability to get downhill and play. Uh, if you give him a sniff, I think everybody in the gym feels like uh, you can always see when he shoots and misses. Everybody's like, oh, you know, everybody kind of deflates because, you know, everybody expects the ball to go in every time, which is the mark of a, a, of a great shooter. And so I um, think he's a guy that can contribute right away. I really do. Um, I know there's a lot of focus on uh, our other guys and, and, and deservedly so, but, but he's a guy, um, you know, incredible toughness, high, high level of skill, and then he's He's got a super high basketball IQ, and those things have always, you know, in my career, translated the guys being successful. And then you put it with the, the day-to-day work. I mean, he's a guy that's in here, you know, it's great to come in here in the morning now. And uh, 8 in the morning, you know, this gym is, is, is humming. And really before that, 7.30, 7.45, guys are in here on their own and getting work in and getting shots, and GAs are in here, and, and guys are, are, are getting work in every single morning. So it's, and he's one of those guys that's an everyday guy. You know, I don't want to talk uh, negatively even about last year or, or in the past, but I feel like some things that or one thing specifically that maybe has lacked is a sense of urgency. Do you feel like this group has that sense of urgency and how much has the, the guys like Voss and Trent and Kay, knowing they only have one year left, mm-hmm. how has that helped your group really have that sense of urgency? Yeah, I mean, I think we know this is, um, you know, the new reality of college basketball. This is it's kind of a year-to-year deal. and. We have six guys. This is their final go around. They all have, um, you know, individual ambitions, um, which fortunately I think, you know, uh, roll into team ambitions, right? I mean, the goal is um, for them to impact and affect winning at the highest level possible so our team can be as good as it possibly be, understanding that if we're successful as a group, everybody will benefit, right? So there's, you know, I I think those guys um, have a sense of urgency about their work because they know this is it. I think that they're high character enough guys. You know, there, there's, I always say there's three types of people. There's those that aren't ambitious, those that are ambitious for themselves, and those that are ambitious for the group. Um, it takes high character to be ambitious for the group and be smart enough to be ambitious for the group and understand that group success will drive your opportunities if you're contributing to that group success. And I think we got guys, the, the character of the group, along with the talent, is what, you know, gives you a lot of hope. And obviously we got to come out and we got to prove it in between the lines and, and, and every team, no matter where, has to answer a lot of questions um, in terms of, you know, the, the commitment level, the competitiveness, unselfish, you know, everybody wants to sacrifice until they have to sacrifice. There's all kinds of stuff we got to answer. But the hope is in the talent and the character of the group. I really believe in that with, with everything I have. And, you know, the, the practices here in the summer, um, you know, last summer you felt like it, it was, you know, obviously there's a lot of newness and everything. I mean, we're going to send these guys home next week for two weeks just to get them away. I feel like we're, we're so far ahead of schedule, we're not going to bring them back till July 10th, you know, just because we're going to go Monday, Tuesday, and then give them a break for, for July 4th, and, and they'll go home for, for 12, 13 days and just, hey, because I, I don't want to, you know, overdo it. I don't want to go too hard and burn through too much uh, at, at this point. So it's a complete opposite of last year where, you know, I felt like, you know, we, we, we were trying to just play catch up, and some of that's just – first year some of that's just having we have a group of returners and some of that is these new guys and 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 the, and the pace at which they're able to learn you know that's been probably the most impressive thing to me is how quickly they can take and process information and are able to pick up on what we're doing so knowing you're about to go into a little bit of a break obviously mm-hmm. still got time to work with your guys what's most important that you want to really keen in with them before you do give them that little bit of a break yeah i, th- I think the summer for me is, is really about you know understand like building a foundation of how you want to play offensively and defensively like we're not going to spend a lot of time we haven't put in a play I mean we're not coming down and what we're trying to do is teach them reads I always think you know offensively we've talked about this you know the hardest thing to guard is organized randomness right so can you be random and organized randomness in itself is not hard if people are just running around in circles and so it's, it's being able to organize be organized but be random and so teaching guys how to play within that what are we going to do structurally? How are we going to play in transition? How are we going to play in our flow, our motion? How are we going to guard? What are we going to do defensively? Um, you know, obviously, 
with our roster, we're going to play a lot differently defensively than we did last year. Offensively, we have more to our menu, right? I mean, offense is a menu. Menu is based on the, the talent and skill set of the players you have. So the more skill you have, uh, the more things you can add to your menu. So I think we'll be much more diverse than that. So trying to get them to understand them playing enough five on five that, you know, they get comfortable. That's the biggest thing with when you're when you play uh, randomly and you're trying to be give them some structure and concepts is to play enough that they get comfortable understanding each other. What do we do well? What do I do well? You know, spacing, reads, and, and then it looks seamless when you get hopefully to November. But right now, you know, you, you can see there's times where it looks really good. There's times where, you know, two guys are not on the same page and, you know, turnovers and things of that sort. But in terms of, you know, uh, our effort level, our compete level, all those things are, I mean, you've been in here. And, and again, it's not a knock on anything. It's just a different team. It's, it's higher than it ever was last year. And we're in June. So it's almost like, hey, let's scale this back. Let's, let's take a break. Let's, let's, you know, decompress for two weeks. Then let's come back and, and get to work and finish the summer off. But I really want to see us continue to build and understand our foundation on both ends. And that's what I hope this whole summer is about, is that we walk out of here uh, July 29th with an idea, all right, this is how we want to play. And then we'll come back and, you know, we won't have a play and we won't have anything in, but come back and start adding those other pieces, but build that foundation. They've done a, a great job three weeks in. I hear a lot of athletes that we've had that have made it to that next level. Mm -hmm. They said really the difference when they get there is the understanding of what you're doing because you're not thinking when you're playing mm -hmm. and that allows you to go faster. Does that kind of lead into what you were just telling me and mm -hmm. you do the blender action, you do all that stuff this summer to where when you guys get into the season, your guys really aren't thinking on their feet. They just, no. they know what they're doing. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, you wanna, you wanna take the, you know, thinking slows you down and it's being able to, to, you know, offenses, there's a lot of different ways to be successful. And so you can come out, there's plenty of programs that run patterns and are fantastic at doing it. And, you know, Purdue's a great example. They run sets all the time and they run unbelievable sets and they, they're a great team. Um, there's others, but for us, um, you know, that organized randomness, um, the more we can get guys to, to, to kind of do it without, it's almost like jazz, you know, you just kind of kind of find your rhythm, offense is rhythm. And, can we find rhythm? And then you got to know who you're playing with and what do they do well? And so, you know, and, and you want to make sure. So if I'm, you know, what does Mason Miller do well? Well, that's different than what Voss does well, which different than what Jason Kent does well, Cam Henry, these guys. And so how do we play with one another? Who am I? Who are my teammates? How's the defense playing us? And you're trying to get and build um, that, that, kind of, that, that, that kind of, you know, pool of information that they have that they can draw on and, and, and that they understand in real time you know, what the right read is. And guys, because, you know, when you're playing randomly and you're not calling a back door, well, maybe the guy goes back door, and if the guy doesn't throw it, you know, it doesn't matter. Or if the guy, you know, thinks he's going back door, throws it, and the guy stays. So you saw that last year with us a little bit. You know, our, our turnover problems, uh, you know, we, we led the league in turnovers. Um, it's an area that we're going to probably turn it over a little more than the average team because we're going to probably play faster and take more risks. Um, but it can't be where it was last year. It can't be 20% of our possessions. Uh, that number has to get down into 16 or 17% of our possessions. And hopefully our assist numbers and our scoring numbers will, you know, uh, be enough to offset that, right? But, but so that's where you're trying to build that in, in this summer where, where, again, you can play without having to think. And, and you do that through repetition. The repetition is what removes the thinking. And so it's coming out and it's, it's drilling your habits and then it's playing and drilling your habits and playing and doing it and doing it and not getting bored you know, with that process.